Hello and welcome to part 9 of Let's Create a 2D Platformer in the Godot Game Engine. My name is Colin, and in this tutorial, not so many series, we're creating this 2D platformer video game. Of course, in this game, you control the player on screen. You can walk, run, jump, and fall. You can squash enemies, get hit by enemies, collect coins, shoot fireballs, do wall jumps. You know how 2D platformer games work. But as it stands in our project right now, we have a character that can explore a world. In the last video in this miniseries, we added a parallax background, which means a background with multiple layers. If you've not seen that video, I'll put a link to it up on the screen right now. But in this video, we're gonna be adding the ability for our game to detect if we fall into the abyss. In other words, if we fall off a platform and we don't land on the ground, we fall through a hole in the ground or off a cliff, well, our game will detect that and how we're gonna handle this is probably the most basic thing you can do when you fall out of the game, you fall into the abyss, is we're gonna switch scenes. But we only have one scene in our game project right now, and I wanna save creating like a game over screen for a future video. So we're gonna switch scenes, but we're just gonna actually reset our current level back to the same scene again to reload our game level. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into the Godot editor. Of course, if you like this video or if you've done something in it, please go ahead and click on that like button below this video. It really helps out me and my channel. And if you want to see more videos like this one in the Godot game engine or in Blender or other technology, click on that subscribe button as well and click the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. So as you can see in the editor, we've got our level one scene open and I've got my little character over here and I have a parallax background that when I play, of course, as of the last video, you see different layers of my background moving at different speeds when the camera moves. So it looks kind of neat in the background. And of course my player can jump and fall and walk around. And of course I can fall off a cliff. And when I do that, well, nothing happens. Our camera in our game has limits, so the camera will not keep following our character when it goes down below a certain point, but my character is just gonna keep falling forever. To stop that from happening, we're gonna be adding what's called an Area 2D node, or basically a zone, below our game's platforms in the abyss. And this zone, this Area 2D, is going to detect whenever our player comes into contact with it. Now in this video, I'm also going to be introducing a new topic in Godot, a new feature that I haven't talked about yet in this mini-series, and that is signals. Signals in Godot are a way of running a block of code called a function when an event takes place. Signals are also a way of listening for, or really responding to, common events for different types of objects. So different types of objects in Godot, like kinematic body 2Ds, like our character object, and these new area 2Ds, which we're about to add to our scene, have different common events that are associated with them, and we'll see those in just a moment. But also, signals are a way of communicating between different objects, because signals can call a function of code when triggered, and that function, that block of code, can be on a different object. So signals are really Really powerful and we'll get to them in just a moment. First let's go ahead and select our level one root node and I'm going to press plus and I'm going to add what's called an area 2D. Now uh, don't select the area pink node, they might name this area 3D in the future, I'm not sure, it's the 3D one. Area 2D is right here. It's under collision objects, if you don't want to search it is under node 2D and then the collision object 2Ds are right there, and then area 2Ds are right there, right next to physics bodies. And again, area 2D objects are objects that can collide with other objects, but they are not physics objects because they don't have the ability to bump into other objects like our other types of physics objects. So area 2D is similar, but a little bit different. It's a collision object. It's great at detecting collisions. Let's go ahead and double click on it. And it's right here and I'm gonna name it. So I'll double click. I'm gonna call it fall zone and I'll press enter. Now our area 2D has an error. Let's go ahead and see what this is. I'll click on the error and it says this node has no shape. So it can't collide or interact with other objects. Consider adding a collision shape 2D or collision polygon 2D as a child to define its shape. We've seen this error before. We've seen it whenever we've added, let's say a character or an object to our game, like a static body that needs not only a physics object, but also a shape, a collision shape 2D in order for us to have kind of a force field where it knows how to hit other objects or its own collision shape. So we're gonna press okay. And I'm gonna select the fall zone and I'm gonna press the plus and I'm gonna add a collision shape 
2D. So I'll search for collision. It's probably in my recents as well, because again, I've used it for my character and for my static bodies and for my one-way platforms. So it is right there as well, but I'll just double click on it. And so now we have a right here at zero, zero in our scene. We have a collision. Oh, you know what? I added a collision polygon. I'm going to actually right click uh, on that node and I'm going to select change type. I'm going to change this to a collision shape 2D. You probably caught me doing that by mistake. So now this collision polygon, the name of it is uh, wrong. It's collision shape 2D. So with this collision shape selected, I'm going to give it a shape. It's going to be a rectangle shape 2D. So I had to have it selected in order for me to see its properties over here in the inspector. And so now we have a rectangle shape. I can make the shape bigger. And you guessed it, this shape needs to go below our platforms, our level. And you know what? I could glue together the fall zone so that when I move the fall zone, the shape moves with it. So if I select the fall zone, I can click on this, uh, make sure that the objects children are not selectable button. I call that the glue together button. And when I press that, it puts this little icon here. And now when I drag the fall zone, well, it actually moves the fall zone itself and the collision shape. I've talked about that before in previous videos. It doesn't actually matter though, because you can move the collision shape and leave the fall zone up here. It's up to you. And so I'm going to put this fall zone down here below the cliff. And you know what? I'm going to select the collision shape. I'm going to make it wider, wide enough so that I can cover this area as well. And I'm going to move it over. And because I have that glue together button turned on, on the fall zone, it uh, will move the entire thing over. Okay. So I quite like that. I think no matter how I fall off any of these platforms, I'm going to hit this area 2D. So if I go ahead and press play scene now, of course the game will load. Of course I can walk over to a cliff and jump off of it. And let's see what happens. Nothing. But you know what? That area 2D did actually detect us, our character, falling through that area. Area 2Ds don't have any sort of solid object to hit. They just detect. This is where signals come in. If I select my fall zone, my area 2D, and go over to the node tab next to the inspector, you can see there are two kind of areas under this node tab, signals and groups. We'll worry about groups in a different video. But under signals, we have common signals or event types that are common with area 2D. So I'm going to make this a little bit wider on my screen. So you can see here events that are common for area 2Ds like area entered. That means when another area enters this area, you can trigger some code to happen. When an area exits this area, well, you can trigger code to happen. We want, well, our character is a physics body. We want to work with these two signals right here called body entered and maybe body exited. I don't think we'll use that one, but this body entered signal detects or allows an area 2D to run code whenever it detects a physics body that enters it. Now, this signal is kind of like a listener. It's always sort of going to have the ability to detect whenever that event happens. In order to link this event up with some code so that when this happens, it runs that code, we can double click on it over here. So I'll double click right on body entered. And it's asking us now in this new dialog box to pick an object to put the code on. In other words, make a function on that will run whenever that event, that signal is emitted. In this case, our fall zone doesn't have a script on it at all. We haven't added a script to it. So I'm going to put this code on Steve. So I'm going to click on Steve in this list and Steve has a script here and it's going to make a function. It's using the word method, but really it's a function called on fall zone body entered. If that's a good name for you, it's a good name for me. I will press connect. You have to make sure you select Steve before you press connect. So I'll press connect. And as you can see, it jumped us over to our script workspace. I can go back to 2D if I want. And it's showing us right now Steve script. So if I click on the little icon next to uh, Steve for the script, you can see that's where we are. We're in Steve.gd. It's added a new function called on fall zone body entered and it doesn't have any code in it yet. And that's what this pass means. I'm going to select that line, that pass line and get rid of it. 
And now we're going to write the code that switches our scene to, it could be a different scene, but we're going to go back to this scene. We're going to reload our scene called level1.tscn, get underscore tree. And that means basically your whole tree of your project folder. And this is a method call. So you're going to put get tree and then two round brackets, and then you'll write a dot and get tree has a method built into it called change scene. And there's one called change scene two. We're not going to use that one. We're going to use change scene. And when you call this method, it's going to be asking you to write the path to the file name of the scene that you want to switch to. Now, the scene that we're going to be switching to is just level1.tscn. And if I put that in quotes, it's not quite going to work because we need to say exactly where we're going to, including the entire path, which starts when you're working in Godot in the file system with res colon slash slash. This is kind of like a URL in your web browser when you write HTTP colon slash slash it's kind of the same idea if i select level 1.tscn it'll show me the path to that right up here so i can actually just copy that i'll select it Control c on my keyboard command c on a mac and paste that in double quotes right there and that should work i'll leave that on screen for just a moment if you want to copy that as you pause the video but i will go up and play my scene and the game will load and if i walk over to the edge of the cliff and i'll do an epic little jump off well my game reloads it's really that simple one more time i'll speed this part of the video up and i'm going to do something a little bit more epic here i'll do a few jumps and then i'll fall off and as you can see the scene just reloaded right away so i'll close this preview so you can see that code again there it is. One thing that you'll want to check if this is not working the way that you expect, you can actually see a signal over in the node dot whenever it is being handled. In other words, whenever it is calling a function that you've set up. In fact, over in the scene doc, you can see next to this fall zone, a little Wi-Fi icon, or that's what I call it. It's actually a signal icon. And so if I select my fall zone and then I look over here under the node doc, you can see under body entered, that on the Steve object, and this little icon means that it is running a piece of code on the Steve object, it is running a function called on follow zone body entered. Now, if you were to go back into Steve's code and change the name of that function, it would no longer work because the signals path would be broken. Okay, so be mindful of that. One last thing before we end this video is, and you might have thought of it already, what happens if a different physics body falls into the fall zone? Well, what's going to happen? Well, right now our fall zone is a little bit dumb. It doesn't know what physics body is entering it. It just will respond with any of them. So if I look at my Steve's code, you can see that any physics body will cause this code to run. We don't necessarily want that. If you have, let's say, an enemy that's also maybe a kinematic body 2D and the enemy falls into the fall zone, you don't want to restart your level. But we're going to handle this problem in a future video when we talk about collision layers. So I will save that for another video. That will be it for this video. Of course, if you like this video or if you learned something, please go ahead and click on that like button below this video. It really helps out me and my channel. And if you want to see more videos like this one in the Godot game engine or in Blender or other technology, click on that subscribe button as well and click the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. Check out my Facebook page and my Instagram page. In those two places, I post sneak peeks and previews of what I'm working on next. And it's where I communicate with you guys the most. But that'll be it for this one. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>